Good evening, guys. This is Dr. Paul. Once again, thank you for tuning to our channel today. As always, I invite you to visit our website at uh, www.usmlvideos.net. That is www.usmlvideos.net, where we have posted hundreds of videos for those of you who are preparing for USML examination. Today, let me give you a few thoughts on hereditary spirocytosis. Hereditary spirocytosis, when you think about the main essentials of diagnosis, it is characterized by the deficiency of spectrin in red cell membrane. Secondly, it causes anemia and jaundice and splenomegaly. Patients usually have a positive family history of uh, anemia, jaundice, and uh, gallstones. And if you take a peripheral smear, you will see microspirocytes with increased reticulocytes. And uh, there will be also increased osmotic fragility. That's why osmotic fragility test is positive in these patients. And finally, the direct antiglobulin test, the DAT test, is negative. So those are the essentials of diagnosis. Now let me give you some of the general introductory points when we understand this problem. This disease is the most prevalent form of hereditary anemia and it is uh, usually seen in Caucasians with Northern European ancestry. And the disease is heterogeneous. It, uh, it, 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 it occurs with variable forms, mild form, moderate form, and a severe form. In mild form, there will be a, some kind of some form of anemia, but that's not severe. In moderate form, there will be splenomegaly, anemia, and weakness. In a severe form, it is almost to the degree that you need to do a splenectomy in, in, immediately in these patients. The hallmark is uh, microspirocytes in the peripheral blood. Now, a few points about uh, pathophysiology. As I said, there will be deficiency of spectrin in the red blood cell membrane. You see, in the normal red blood cells, which are biconcave in shape, the spectrin attaches the red cell membrane to the underlying cytoskeleton. When the spectrin is absent, it cannot attach this red cell membrane to the underlying cytoskeleton. As a result, the biconcave shape is lost, and the red cell membranes they attain a spherical shape. And these spherical uh, red blood cells, they lose that flexibility. You see, normal red blood cells, they are so flexible, they can traverse into the microcirculation. But these uh, spherical red cells, they cannot get f that flexion they need. And as a result, they get trapped within the microcirculation. As more and more uh, spherical uh, cells get trapped within the microcirculation, the spleen gets enlarged. And the enlarged spleen causes spleno splenomegaly in these patients and the red blood cells, they get destroyed. That causes anemia, which causes fatigue and weakness. And the destruction of red blood cells put more burden on the bone marrow. And the bone marrow produces more and more reticulocytes. That's why we see increased number of reticulocytes in these patients. So by thinking pathophysiology, you can actually think about signs and symptoms and also diagnosis. Now a few words about uh, signs and symptoms. As you can say, the increased red blood cells destruction causes uh, increased level of uh, bilirubin in the blood. So this causes hyperbilirubinemia, which causes jaundice in these patients. The destruction of red blood cells causes anemia, which causes fatigue and weakness in these patients. And uh, as the destruction takes place in the spleen, in the spleen, this causes splenomegaly in these patients, which can cause <coughs> abdominal pain as it becomes a severe. And uh, finally, it also causes gallstones. So anemia and uh, jaundice and splenomegaly. These are the important points. Now coming to laboratory findings, there will be anemia, hemoglobin level between 9 and 12 grams, milligrams per deciliter, sorry, grams per deciliter. And also you will see microspirocytes with increased reticulocytes in the peripheral smear and the DAT test, direct antiglobulin test is uh, negative and the uh, osmotic fragility test is positive. And uh, coming to differential diagnosis, 
You see, spherocytes are not unique to hereditary spherocytosis. You will see spherocytes in other hemoglobin apathies, even ABO incompatibility. That's why you need to do direct antiglobulin tests to differentiate hereditary spherocytosis from other forms of hemoglobin apathies. In hereditary spherocytosis, D80 test is negative, whereas in ABO incompatibility, it is positive. That's an important point in the differential diagnosis. Now, complications, as I said, jaundice, anemia, and also when once you do splenectomy, these patients are at high risk for bacterial infections and also gallstones. Those are the complications. And finally, let me give you a few words about the treatment. Treatment as a red blood cell hyperplasia occurs, there will be folate deficiency. So you should give folate supplements to these patients. And also, as you do uh, uh, splenectomy, these patients become more prone to parvovirus infections. That's why you should always treat these patients with exchange transfusion when the patient reaches that kind of stage. And finally, after you do splenectomy, the bacterial infection also increases. Pneumococcal, haemophilus influenza type B, and meningococcal. These three infections, pneumococcal, haemophilus influenza type B and meningococcal. So that's why you need to give these three vaccines to these patients. That's an important point by itself. And um, so do splenectomy because spleen is the culprit. It is uh, removing all these spherocytes from the blood. So splenectomy by the age of five years, that's, uh, that's an important point. So basically that's about uh, uh, this important disease, hereditary spherocytosis, feel free to visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net and post your comments and you can also browse through hundreds of other videos we have posted for your preparation. And as usual, I recommend some books in my videos. Today I am recommending USMLE Smasher. USMLE Smasher is a very important book and uh, I strongly recommend this book. It's only 20 bucks. Most students, they're uh, wasting, I, I am saying, they're literally wasting thousands of dollars on expensive courses. This is all the book you need because this is the book I read when I was preparing for clinical skills. So I strongly recommend this book. This book, USML Smasher, is available on Amazon.com. So if you go to www.amazon.com, just to search for USML Smasher and get your copy and it will be very, very useful. Just for 20 bucks, you are going to pass USML clinical skills examination. That's about for today. And uh, thank you very much. All the best.